Hi, uh, welcome to Finchley College. And uh, this is a video I've produced uh, for the Fundamentals of Building Information Modeling course. It's an uh, overview of what uh, uh, the BIM process is about. And then in the next video, we'll be looking at more detail in the key terms. So, uh, first of all, what we're going to understand is the Building Information Modeling is is composed of three three words building information and modeling this qualification is mainly concerned with the information how we manage the information how we manage the process so this course it does not go too much detail about modeling and it doesn't involve software um, so building it, it means any type of building, any project can be a BIM project, anything we build. Uh, it could be civil engineering project, could be a road project, bridge, housing, even a garage um, can be a BIM process. Because the BIM is about the process mainly, how we manage the um, project in a more efficient manner. And the efficiency is going to bring us reduced reduction in cost, reduction in time, and uh, better product. So, First of all, um, <clears throat> we're going to go to look at the existing processes, how the work is done in the existing way, and then we're going to look at the, the BIM process. In the existing process, is generally adversarial. How that means is that um, some contractor is trying to make more money from the client, the client is trying to pay less money if he can, or uh, countercharge the subcontractor for other things he hasn't done, or deficiencies of work. And generally, everybody is more money oriented mainly. In a BIM process, it's a collaborative process. Is that everybody gets together, trying to resolve the process program uh, problems together and find a solution that is amicable to everyone. The key thing in the collaborative way of working is that it really comes in the design process. In the design stage, uh, you will find that the client, the architect, the subcontractors, architects, and the designers, they work together. Subcontractor produces his model, he puts it into a shared folder, and the client and all other subcontractors can view the model and can make a comment and feedback, and the model can be improved and improved. So at the, at the moment, the, the design process is that the way it works is that um, Subcontractor finishes his design, submits his design, and then at the end of his design, he's getting a feedback. Or other subcontractors don't see any of it at all, and so they're not able to, to give any feedback whatsoever. And the way they, when they see the other designs by that time, they've already project started, and it's a bit late. <clears throat> so collaborative way of working is the key essence of BIM, and that means at the design stage, everybody works together collaboratively. They input into every, everybody's work and they make it better and better and improve it. And what that means, what the effect of it is that the client can see the design, can make changes before even construction work is started. And then by the time the design is finished digitally, it's only then that we actually start work physically on a site. So in the existing processes is that you think of your own work and as I said the designers do their own, subcontractors do their own design and they submit it and they really don't care about everybody else whether it fits uh, into everybody else's work, whether it is easier for them to work in this manner etc. <clears throat> so in the BIM process as I said collaboratively is that they get feedback early and they can change the design to suit. For example, architect has designed a long span of a beam and it may be difficult to manufacture or difficult to install or the installation may take longer or a different way of doing it. A slight change in the design may make it easier for the installers to do the work. And that's where it comes into the design stage. So, in the adversarial process about raising costs and the subcontractor may come up with tender at a low price and then 
once the work starts, he come up with excuses that he can't do it this, he can't do it that way, and he needs to do it different way, and it costs more, and etc. And as it changes, as the inevitably client comes up with changes, they will raise the price, and it will cost more, and they will ask for more money. In the BIM process, all of this design is done before the work starts, and so the cost is minimized, uh, minimized, and therefore is no situation that a subcontractor come with the changing of prices as much as before. Then we look at the environmental aspect. One benefit of the BIM is that environmental protection is built into the BIM. So we'll have a statistics that the BIM model can come with, with the statistics of, <clears throat> uh, for example, the heat loss, the soundproofing, uh, the lighting, everything, the lighting consumption, the energy consumption, that we wouldn't get in a normal uh, building that is produced in a normal process. So a housing project that is completed, we wouldn't know about the environmental impact of that or in environmental use of energy use on a daily basis, whereas we would know it on a BIM project. So it's better built, therefore it's environmentally better uh, constructed and better for the environment. Now the crash detection, one of the major problems that raises the cost and the time and the delay in the project is a crash detection. Um, for example, think of a situation where a, a pipe um, for the M&E uh, subcontractor is designed his, his work and now when it comes to the construction, we can see the pipe is going through a beam that nobody knew before. So what would happen? The job has to stop and redesign either the beam or the pipe work so that they stop clashing. Now the clashing doesn't have to be actually physical clash. Sometimes there is no clash, but there's no room left for uh, actually installation. There is no physical room to get there and physically install it because of something else too close. Whereas the beam will show that as the software is going to detect and uh, clash detection soft in the software that will highlight any physical uh, clash and actually be in close proximity. Now, in a normal process, the project will take longer to produce because the design takes longer. A subcontractor does his design, he goes to approval, he may be rejected, he may have to go to redesign, and then another subcontractor produces their own design, he will have to go for the um, uh, alteration. So that project will take a lot longer uh, to design. So design projects take longer. Now, one of the other things that takes this project go longer is the planning. In the BIM process, um, the planning laws can be implemented into the BIM software. So, for example, if a corridor has to be a certain width, if it is not, it can uh, flag up that it doesn't meet the standards or the um, building regulation. So, it also makes it easier for the, the council and the um, to approve because they know it's already been checked by the BIM. So that means that the project construction time is reduced in a BIM than in a normal process. Okay, so that's an overview of how the BIM works. Now, for a contractor to become, to be able to work in a BIM, it's a selection process. In the normally in the construction project, which is not BIM, we select or the client selects a subcontractor based on A, they may know him beforehand, they have references, or they may be recommended to them. In this one, the, the process selection process is the same, but plus a BIM compliance. It means the subcontractor or the architect or anyone involved must be a level two BIM compliant. BIM has got uh, four levels, level zero, level one, level two, and level three. Level zero is a level that it does nothing, there's no beam, there's no nothing at all, and level three is the future. So level two at the moment is a level that 
uh, we want to achieve in order to be compliant to work. Now, the government has mandated that any government project or public work project, the subcontractors or anyone that tenders for it must be a BIM Level 2 compliant. So that compliance will be, have to be met to be included in the short list of the contractors and to be selected. So that was just a brief introduction into BIM. Thank you very much.